And Hello, everyone. My name is Daryl Hemsley. I'm an HR specialist and the pathways coordinator here for the Department of Justice Office of Inspector General. So today you'll be hearing from various offices um, regarding um, our different areas and what we're pretty essentially um, and what fields um, that may interest you. I'm going to start off with um, an introduction from Carol Tarasco. If you can go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Good morning, Daryl. Um, so it says on the screen there that my name is John Paul Kovis. That's not correct. <laughs> John Paul uh, is on the screen with us also. He works uh, with me in uh, the OIG's audit division. I'm our deputy assistant inspector general, and uh, I've been with the OIG for um, on what sounds like a really long time right now, 32 years. I came in as a, a, a recent graduate from uh, right out of college and have enjoyed li literally every minute that I've been here with the OIG and have promoted up through the system to be uh, what is now the number two in our audit division. The audit division is the largest division within the OIG. I don't know, Daryl, if you intended for me to give a whole background on the audit division, so I can spin back around just as we're doing uh, introductions. But I'm Carol, and it's nice to see everybody today. Awesome. Thank you. Um, next up, Jesse Young. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jesse Young, and I'm a management and program analyst in the management and planning division here at the OIG. Um, I have been here for about four years now, and I actually started as a Pathways intern, um, and then once I graduated, converted to a permanent position here. Um, I work in the immediate office of our division and assist in wide, um, wide uh, variety of different um, responsibilities, and I'm really excited to be here with you today. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Stacy. Hello, everyone. Um, I am a supervisory investigative specialist within the hotline operations branch of the investigations division of the OIG. Um, I have been with the OIG for, oh my gosh, I think 22 years now. Um, and that's because I, it's, it's a fantastic place to work. Um, and I see myself staying here until I retire. Awesome. Thank you. And looks like last but not least, I have uh, John Paul. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am a program analyst with the audit division. Um, I've been here for about 17 years. Uh, I work for headquarters, so I'm kind of a, a, a wingman with whatever needs to get done. Um, I posted a chat there that if you guys have any questions or thoughts as as you listen to the briefings, feel free to post them there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to actually start today with some background on the DOJ OIG. Uh, we are an independent entity of the Department of Justice whose mission is to detect and de deter waste, fraud, abuse, and misconduct in the DOJ and to promote economy excuse me, economy and efficiency in the department's operations. Our Inspector General, Michael Horowitz, is appointed by the President, subject to Senate confirmation, and reports to the Attorney General and Congress. The OIG consists of the immediate office, Office of General Counsel, and six divisions, as you've heard some um, noted here, Audit Division, uh, Investigations Division, Evaluation Division, uh, Management and Planning, Information Technology Division. Um, the audit, and the audit division and the evaluation inspections have representatives with us, as you guys have, uh, excuse me, the uh, audit division has someone with us right now. In a few months, I will turn it over to them so they can more so tell you, give them more in-depth background um, about what their attributes they're looking for as prospective employees. Um, but before I do that, I did want to say a few words about federal employment. Um, if you all do not have an account on USA Jobs, I would encourage you to definitely go on usajobs.gov and sign up. Um, we have a wealth of opportunities that are coming down the pipeline. Um, notably so, the audit division has an accounting and intern position, a budget, excuse me, intern position that's also live. It closes um, this week. And we also just announced um, a general and a general administrative and office support position, and that was announced today, and that will close on the 29th. So there are some opportunities that we have that, that are live right now. And I will um, share that link with you guys. Thank you so much, JP. Um, I'm shortly at the conclusion of this presentation and I will provide that, uh, that information to Denise as well. 
Um, so also, um, I will now, um, as turning over to um, the divisions to give a little more in-depth um, background. So I will start um, with um, Carol. Thanks, Daryl. And then mm -hmm. I'm looking at our pictures, Daryl, but just making sure we don't have anyone from our E&I division. Is that right? No, we do not. I thought we did, but yeah, they didn't show up. No, that's okay. I think, I'm sorry, I'm gonna like my light turn back on. <laughs> So sorry. So I think I could talk. Um, what I say for the audit division will uh, likely cover most of what I think our evaluations and inspections division would also say because our divisions do somewhat similar work. So as I said before, our audit division is the largest division within the OIG. We're about 40% of the, of the OIG. And what we do are generally called yellow book audits that's a pretty technical term throughout the throughout the department of justice or of activities that the doj funds so for instance doj contracts or doj grants and our uh these yellow book audits that we do that's really just a set of standards under which we are able to issue an audit report. So it's very similar in a way to what CPAs do when they issue an audit report. But the difference is, is that we're doing performance audits. We're not doing financial audits, mostly. We do have an office that does financial audits and they oversee the, the financial statement audits within the Department of Justice. But that's a relatively small piece of what we do. The vast majority of our resources in the audit division are geared towards these performance audits. And those performance audits is where the similarity with our evaluation and inspections division comes in. What those performance audits are doing is going out and looking at a Department of Justice operation or a funded activity and looking at whether or not that program is achieving what it's supposed to be achieving if it's using the funds efficiently and effectively, and if essentially the taxpayer is getting what it should be getting out of whatever that operation or activity is. So the Department of Justice is made up of a lot of a little, not maybe little, but a lot of components. And those components include the FBI, which everybody's heard of, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, our U.S. attorneys throughout the country, 95 districts, the U.S. marshals, which coincide in those same in those same districts, but also the Bureau of Prisons, the Federal Bureau of Prisons is within the Department of Justice. But then throughout the department, there are also smaller organizations that do different things. We have granting offices that, that give grants to nonprofits, cities, states, et cetera, for helping um, combat violence against women, helping to create uh, task forces, whether they're, they're crime focused or, or, or otherwise. They do, we do research and development grants to universities to develop new approaches and new technologies in whether it's criminal justice, corrections, uh, community service, et cetera. And we can look at any of those things. It could be DNA labs. I mean, if you name it and look through the Department of Justice website, you'll see the organizational charts with all of these, the boxes, right? Or all the components within the Department of Justice. That's what our audit universe is. That's what our evaluation and inspections universe is. And we hire people to go out and do these performance audits, evaluations and inspections. And for the most part, the people that we're looking for are people who are very curious, have outstanding critical thinking skills, are really good writers, People who can solve puzzles, <laughs> sounds like a strange thing, but it's people who wanna look for answers, right? Who wanna, are very logically minded, like who can go through and build an argument for you see something wrong, you identify what that condition is, then you go and find out why did it happen? What happened as a result of that condition being in place? And what can we recommend to fix it? Those are, that's a general, how we generally approach all of our work. 
And so for both of us, the audit division and our evaluations and inspections division, while we would be fine with applicants who have a CPA or an accounting background, those are that's not all of who we hire. And quite frankly, we hire very few. There's a there's absolutely a, a, a shortage of CPAs and accounting uh, majors these days. But all business majors are, we are interested in all business majors, but we're also interested in science majors because we do a lot in the DNA testing space. We, we also have an office of data analytics. So we're looking for math majors and we're looking for data, you know, people who can master data management and data wrangling and coding and that sort of thing. Criminal justice majors, we have quite a few. We have some JDs. We have people with law degrees in our organization, in our audit division, and in our evaluations and inspections division. So I encourage you to take a look at, at our organization. Um, similar to what Stacy said, I absolutely plan to retire from this organization. I do love my work. I think the work that we do is incredibly important. We have a very important mission for the taxpayer and for everyone who's interested in the Department of Justice achieving its mission. Um, but we're also a good place to work. This is, uh, you know, a very diverse workforce. We do a lot of different things and there's different places in which you can specialize. And our divisions interact each up with each other well, and we try to learn from each other. So there might be something that we learn in the audit world that gets passed to the investigations division and the other way around. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carol. Sure. Thank you, Daryl. I'm going now. <laughs> Next up, I have Stacey. <laughs> Okay, so in the investigations division, um, we have field offices across the country that investigate um, misconduct by DOJ employees. Um, those investigations tend to be criminal investigations, or they could be administrative if it's high-level personnel or very sensitive issue. Um, so how those how the field offices get the investigations, um, we receive complaints from the DOJ components. And that's where headquarters comes in. Um, and that's where I'm at in headquarters. We receive the majority of complaints from DOJ components. And that, as Carol mentioned, that's FBI, DEA, ATF, um, US attorneys, and the Bureau of Prisons. Um, folks in my group in Hotline Operations Branch, we we receive those complaints. Um, we enter them into our data management system, which means um, my staff is looking at those complaints and reading through them and figuring out the who, what, where, when, and why, and putting that into the system. And then those complaints go to um, special agents within headquarters of INB who assign a complaint disposition. And they determine if we're gonna open an investigation um, or if we're gonna refer that matter back to the components for them to investigate. Um, so, so right now in investigations, um, we are looking to bring on two interns this fall. Um, our interns, um, they, valuable, valuable services um, that they provide us. Um, they answer all our incoming phone calls. And I think Investigations Division probably receives the most calls within the OIG because we have the hotline. So um, our interns are taking um, phone calls from citizens um, to DOJ employees to um, somebody, a congressional staffer, um, reporters calling to get information on something that we just posted on our website. Excuse me, I have a cat trying to climb on screen here. Um, so, so what we're looking for is very strong communication skills. You have no idea who's going to be on the other end of that phone call, and and we need you to um, respond very professionally, um, very calmly when you have someone calling who's who's irate, who thinks the FBI is stalking them or something. So, so it can be very challenging um, dealing with our phone calls. The other thing um, our our interns do um, all the the hotline mail that comes in through our branch. Our interns have to go through all of that mail 
mail complaints and determine what DOJ component um, that they're complaining about. And that may sound easy, but um, there are numerous DOJ components. Sometimes it's very obvious if there if it's an inmate complaining about the Bureau of Prisons. Sometimes it's not obvious, and um, there is a learning curve in learning all of the DOJ components and and getting up to speed to figure out what component this this um, complainant is complaining about. Um, so those are the two main functions that we have our interns do. Um, we we also, because there is such a steep learning curve, we encourage um, our interns to stay longer for a semester. Um, many of our interns stay for a few years um, until they graduate. Um, and, and when we can, we convert them into a full-time position. And in my branch, those positions are investigative specialists. Um, so, you know, just to recap, strong communication skills, attention to detail, um, reading comprehension, and very strong, effective writing skills. That's what we're looking for. Awesome. Thanks so much, Stacey. All right, last but not least, Jesse, can you tell us a little bit about MMP? Yes, of course. All right. So um, I work in the management and planning division, as I mentioned earlier, um, and we provide general mission support services for um, all of the divisions within the office of the inspector general. So front like investigations, audit, evaluation, inspection, oversight and review, all of the various divisions. Um, and within our division, we have um, Office of Human Resources, um, financial planning, um, we have our facilities, procurement, all, all of these different services are, are handled within our, our division. And so we cover, as I mentioned, a wide variety of different areas. Um, that personally is one of the things I've enjoyed about working in our division since starting here is the ability to collaborate across um, all divisions and really get a good feel for the functions um, that are um, carried out in each of the, the various divisions across the OIG. Um, we are looking for um, general administrative support interns who help across a wide array of responsibilities. Um, and that's everything from creating new websites for us to helping implement um, new programs um, such as um, one of the things I was able to help with as an intern was implementing our USA staffing onboarding module. And so, you know, anybody who's hired goes through this process. And so you you end up having a big impact across the board for everybody um, in the OIG and um, really getting to work on a lot of um, substantive projects. Um, you also get to assist on a wide array of different events that um, we hold, everything from um, award ceremonies to speaker series to um, all kinds of um, panels um, that that we hold and the support that we provide for the the um, offices hosting those types of events um, as well as um, as I mentioned the resource planning and budget the financial management office and um, facilities and so Management and planning, we are here in based in DC um, at headquarters. And um, we typically do look for um, interns who are local and can be on site because there is a component of that that's necessary um, coming into the office. But we do provide a lot of flexibility um, to um, uh, telework um, as well. So the the balance there is is definitely something um, that is a huge advantage. Um, in my time, everything like from starting as an intern to now um, uh, my position, it has been just a very, very great experience. I've grown a lot and I'd highly recommend to anybody considering a position here. What a great, um, both, experience from the perspective of just building your resume to really getting to make an impact and then looking at the potential options out there once you graduate. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, actually, I'm going to open it up to um, everyone on the call in a moment, but I did want to touch touch upon uh, the Pathways program very briefly. 
And just as an overview, uh, we the minimum basic requirements for the Pathways program, you have to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. Um, obviously, it can be in any field. Uh, generally, the, we hire at the four or five, which is uh, GS four or five, but we do have some specialties where we may hire at a higher grade, such as the GS seven and GS nine. And those are such as like the information technology, or we may have um, any, like a program analyst per se, or pro so those are other interns at a little higher level, and then you get a more exposure. But that's kind of the overview of what the program, the Pathways program kind of requires. Um, and also, you know, if you're hired, you also have an opportunity to be a part of the mentorship program. Um, every intern has a mentor. So it's really about continuing to develop. Um, we always allow the Pathways intern to really drive that relationship. What do you want to learn? What are your goals? Um, even, I believe, Carol is one of our uh, mentors, too. So she's been, on, been with us for quite some time. So I just appreciate her um, giving her dedication. So um, once again, I'm going to echo this before I open it up to you all. It is a great place to work. Like people say that all the time. I wholeheartedly believe that. Like I really enjoy it here. I'm going to retire here just like the rest of them. <laughs> so um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and um, open it up to all the students and see what questions that you all may have for us. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So I'm going to open it up if people either want to um, raise their hand or if they want to uh, put a question in the chat, this is your chance to ask any and all questions about the process, their programs, what makes a candidate stand out. I certainly could ask questions, but there is lots of people on today's call, so I'd rather have the time for all of you. So I'm looking for questions in the chat. Someone to raise their hand or just unmute themselves. Oh, we've got somebody fantastic. We have, I'm not sure how to pronounce your first name. Is it Jackson? It's Jackson. Yep, Jackson. Thank you. And I appreciate you all uh, having this meeting today. Uh, this question, I believe, is best could be directed to Stacy. Um, with the internship program that you all host, I believe in a prior USA jobs listing, there was a uh, requirement that interns had to have familiar, familiarity with um, uh, running a hotline. Do you know if that's going to be the case for uh, this upcoming internship application? So when we interview the applicants, um, we do look for um, maybe not necessarily hotline experience, but telephone experience or customer service experience. I think that's all related. Um, our, the, a current intern I have, she worked on a, a hotline crisis phone. Um, Another intern I have, she worked um, in retail um, and dealt with a lot of um, frustrated customers. Um, so, so any anything like that really helps. Um, just engagement, engaging with people, knowing how to talk with people, knowing how to calm down someone who's very angry and frustrated. All those skills are helpful. So, not not specifically hotline. That's not really necessary. Thank you very much. And do you have an estimate on when uh, it may be posted to USA Jobs? So I just posted in the chat. That's it's actually live. I posted this morning. So there's a general admin and there's also one that's like um, in budget, accounting and budget in turn. So you have two opportunities right there. Great. Thank and you also, all very much. You can set a tickler as well in USA Jobs if you I don't know if you have an account. Or, so whenever we post a job, you will automatically be notified as well. Thank you all. It looks like we just got a question in the chat. Uh, would a Pathways internship be available for students graduating this May, or is it targeted more for students graduating at a later time? Excellent question. So it's the two part. Um, so the current announcement that we have, those are geared toward current students, but we do have recent grant opportunities as well. Um, currently, we don't have any. Well, that could change because it's also depending on, you know, the, the time shift. I would say more so we may have some coming up next year. I don't have any on my radar, but we definitely have recent grad opportunities. And pretty much you have to be uh, two years, within two years of graduating from your um, from your degree, whatever that be, undergrad or what have you. Um, and also, so yeah, great question. And if I could sort of tack on to what Daryl was saying, our division, the audit division, does a lot of recent grad hiring as opposed to like we're a little bit different from our investigations division for the totality 
Uh, Stacy's office may very well hire some, but our agents generally come as experienced agents from elsewhere in the federal government. We do quite a lot of recent grad hiring, and I failed to mention earlier that we're also a nationwide organization, similar to our investigations, brothers and sisters. The audit division has six regional offices. Uh, we have one in Washington, D.C., actually in Crystal City, but we're also located in Philadelphia, Atlanta, Chicago, Denver, and San Francisco. And we have had recent graduate announcements for each of those offices over the last year or two, and we'll probably continue to do that. Um, and our investigate, I'm sorry, our evaluation and inspections office also has recently done quite a bit of recent grad hiring. And for the most part, our recent grad hiring mirrors our intern hiring. So it's the same set of skills and same set of um, academic paths that, that we're looking for. We're looking for in both, both, whether it's an intern or for a recent grad announcement. What other questions? While we wait, I'm going to ask one that I think is often on people's minds. Um, when they're thinking about, you know, what kind of experiences they can be getting, other internships, other um, uh, other things that they're doing while they're in graduate school, other courses, um, other papers, capstones, what things, you know, you all get a lot of resumes. <laughs> what makes somebody stand out that you you know, rise to the top to, you know, if, if they've made it into the best qualified list after going through USA Jobs, what makes somebody get pulled and grab your attention that they can be thinking about as students? I can try and field that one at least first and and, and certainly um, invite anybody else to come on top of, of what what I offer. So we're really looking for what I said earlier, the, the, the use of logic and for the analysis of a problem and determination of potential solutions. So things that you can offer that highlight those, um, those activities or what contributes to it. Uh, you know, if you've been involved in developing a survey or if you have taken on a hypothesis and tested it and written a paper to show what the result was. Um, any sort of, I mean, quite frankly, things like uh, debate, things where you're building an argument and supporting it. We do also appreciate just the good old fashioned, like a term paper uh, experience that people have because that demonstrates, there goes my light again, uh, that demonstrates research and information gathering and consumption, reading comprehension, and then and then application of learning. Those types of experiences work really, you know, definitely pop out of a resume. I would also strongly encourage anyone who goes through the USA Jobs um, platform to identify positions. Don't take that process lightly. Read the announcement very closely. And I, I have a college student, uh, my daughter's a, a college student right now, and we talk a lot about this, that it can be difficult when you're not familiar with government positions, that a lot of the language is difficult to absorb and apply and trying to determine whether or not you're eligible because it's just not uh really the you're just not in the environment to understand some of the terminology but really read the announcement where it describes what the duties are and how you will be evaluated and and take a moment to think about those and apply them to what you've done and sort of find where each of those skills where each of those competencies that we identify what you have to highlight in your resume and then do that. Honestly, just doing that is a demonstration of a lot of the competency of reasoning and reading comprehension and presentation and briefing of, of information. 
Um, but do take that moment to do that rather than coming up with a resume that you will use to apply for a wide variety of positions, because oftentimes that's how you can sort of fall through the cracks is it, it's sort of obvious that you're, that you're not looking for this position, you're just looking for a position. Questions. This is your chance to to ask them. Big questions, little questions. Yes, we see a hand raised. Mary. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just wanted to take the time to say thank you very much for your time and generally for the briefing. I really appreciate it. Um the overall descriptions that you are provided for the different positions that are present. But I wanted to chime in and ask a more general question specific to the women um, that are present within this panel. I wanted to ask you all, what are some skill sets you wish you worked on or just generally kept in mind prior to starting your position, your permanent position, especially within the federal levels? Jesse, you're much more um, recent to having started your position. Can we lean on you for that? I might have a little hard time uh, searching back that far in my memory bank. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so kind of I'll echo what you said about um, any experience you get with like things like debate team that strengthening your ability to present, you know, gather information, compile it and then present it in a um in a well organized way and and really um i guess you know part of what goes along with that is the confidence to um speak up and have your voice be heard um and you know i, I for me it, that took a little while of like acclimating um and and finding um what i had to offer um, but, you know, one of the really incredible things about my experience here has been the mentoring program and having just so many incredible people around me to encourage me through that, um, that process. And I mean, I think that's a lifelong process, but of, of really like figuring out where you fit into a team what your strengths are, and then um, basically how to use your skill set um, for the good of the organization and and to make a difference there. And and um, you know, I think it's essential to be able to work on a team, rely on each other, trust each other, and um, and really um, have the mentality of what's good for all of us and not it's not so much about me, but you know, the, the greater good there. I think what you just mentioned too, Jesse's a, a good answer to Denise's uh, previous question, but highlighting within your resume, your team, your teamwork experiences. I think that, that that is something good to highlight, but something else that Jesse mentioned made me think of something that I do recognize as a uh, something that we often have to have to teach to, to our new hires. And that is the, the skill of being able to have a difficult conversation. So in the, on the audit side, that's what we do. We have to deliver um, a critique of something. We have to deliver the good and the bad uh, thoughts that we have in evaluating something. And you can't, you can't sidestep ish that issue. We're going to issue a public report. If you haven't already taken a look at our website and seen some of the public reports that we put out there, they're critical of some of the department's operations and activities. And we don't want, it's not, it's not fair to the department if they read that for the first time on the last day of our audit, if they're hearing that for the first time. And so our, our teams have to, and this is throughout the OIG because that's what all of our divisions do, we have to prepare the department and make sure that we're getting the all of the appropriate sides of the story. And we have to be able to hold up that mirror to them and and tell them in no uncertain terms where we see the the shortcomings or the weaknesses that need to be fixed. And those aren't easy conversations to have. And some of these are high level officials who have been in their careers for a long time. And so that that is a skill to have to bring to the table, have, being able to have those conversations. And so being able to do that is something um, 
Mary, that that is something to work on if it's not something that you that that you already see as a as a skill in your toolbox. I'd just like to add that um, in my time with the OIG and, and working for the department as a whole, I've seen that strong communication skills, I, I think, is one of the most important things, one of the most important skills to have. Um, and again, that, that that's something we look for in our interns. And it's something that that will carry you through your career. Uh, so our interns are answering our phones, but uh, if you become an FBI agent, you, you can be a duty agent and you're answering their phone calls. Obviously those skills would be used um, in interviews um, with, with bad guys or witnesses. Um, so I think that that's really one of the most important skills to have. And, and for us in investigations division, um, reading comprehension and writing skills. It looks like uh, Nate has his hand raised. Hi, yeah, thanks. Uh, so I'm, I find a little bit older than some of my fellow students uh, just quit my job and so I could come back to grad school. And I'm thinking about uh, internships as an opportunity to gain maybe more relevant experience in a specific field. But I'm also thinking on the other hand uh, about uh, maybe not wanting to take opportunities away from undergrads coming out of college and maybe not want, maybe thinking that this isn't, that I'm not the target audience. And I guess I'm wondering in a general way, no pressure, what you think about uh, people with more years behind them uh, looking for internships. And you tell me if that's a loaded question. You know, I, I can actually speak to that. I um, started my internship. Um, I think I was um, about 34 years old. And so definitely older than, you know, um, a lot of the other um, interns I started with at the time. Um, but I don't think that really um, should deter you from applying to things. It, it has been, as I mentioned, an incredible experience and, um, I think you actually bring something to the table sometimes um, having had more experience, life experience, that can be really invaluable, um, both to your peers um, coming on board with you, um, but also to the team that you'll be joining. So, uh, you know, I, I'd say you should definitely apply to whatever um, you'd be interested in. I concur. And I will say we have we have um, other interns that have started their career over that are currently here now. So it's, I, you know, it's never too late. Yeah. Right. And Daryl mentioned earlier the different grade levels. Our GS3, 4, and 5 uh, interns are college students, so undergrad. And at least in the audit division, and, and Daryl mentioned earlier that we have some in the information technology area. I'm not as familiar with that. But we have a GS7 what we call a policy analyst intern position that are, those are fully intended for graduate students. So it's expected because a GS7 would indicate that you have a bachelor's degree. And I'm sure you're familiar with, you know, the Pathways program provides for the non-competitive placement. If we have a position and if, and if it works out, if we're all in agreement that you like the job and, um, you're a fit for it and we like the the intern that that's a potential for this the non-competitive uh placement for graduate students the expectation i think that at least we have in the audit division is those individuals are likely able to work more hours in a pay period because you're you're not generally having a full five class load, although everybody approaches their, you know, their, their academic career differently. And those individuals are much, uh, they're, they're just easier seen as someone who is essentially already a full-time, a, a full-time employee. They're just one step closer, but they're both internships. There's not much different from it, from that perspective, but we do have that special program that is geared towards graduate students that are that are coming with already having that that bachelor's degree and likely already having some work experience although not always um and we we haven't used that program a whole lot but we have used it and it's been very successful so far and the individuals that have come to us nat have been 
I mean, it's a very diverse group, including with their the amount of experience that they've had. That's great. I appreciate the insight. Thank you. I think there was uh, in the chat, um, can a student with an economics background be considered for the accounting and budgeting internship? Yes. Yes. If you, when you read the announcement, there is we, in that particular announcement, it doesn't say you have to have a particular degree. It's really open ended. You could have a degree in, I don't know, program management, for example. So um, they're just more so looking, and I would let you know, Carol speak more in depth, but they're really looking for those skill sets that Carol has spoken spoke to. So it's not like qualification where you just have to have one type of degree. So it's a lot more open ended, and it's an internship. So we already expect everyone to essentially come from different various disciplines. So do not let that deter you um, at all. I encourage everyone to apply. Other questions people have? Still have 15 minutes left. Not gonna keep us if we don't need to be, but um, also wanna make sure students have time. While, while we have a little silence, I want to also make a, a little pitch, I like to say, about something else. What's unique about our Pathways program is that it lasts the duration of your academic career. If you notice most internships, they end they're only on an intermittent basis, so it'll be a not to exceed. It'll end at the end of your, like the summer, or it may just be a couple months. So that's the difference. You also get benefits here. You can sign up for, you know, TSP, which is or you may know it as 401k in the private sector, um, you have all these different opportunities to kind of, so to speak, jumpstart your career, your federal career. So let's say, okay, you come in as an undergrad and you decide, I want to go and pursue uh, my master's. You can still remain in the program. Oh, I'm going to do my PhD. As long as you're enrolled, actively enrolled, and you maintain that GPA and you're performing at the successful or higher you may remain in the program. So that's very unique um, that most agencies, they, do not, they don't have that part. That's not how they run their pathways program. So I just want to um, make that statement. Looks like we have another question. Oh, Kathy wants to go to class. Enjoy class. Any other questions? If not, um, I will go ahead and thank you all. This was, as always, really, really tremendous. It's a wonderful opportunity and really appreciate you all sharing your insights uh, with everyone on the call today, including myself. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.